My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce okay. yourself to us and let us know where you're coming in from. Sure. Uh, my name is Hadi Safa. I am the CEO of Standards Consultancy and Training. I come from Lebanon. And uh, part of what we do, I mean, the headquarters is in Lebanon, but we travel all over the Middle East to cater for our clients over there. Uh, our, our, our business is a mix of, of consultancy, training, coaching uh, for executives, for CEOs, and for teams as well. That is awesome. I know that we wanted to talk. A lot of individuals, entrepreneurs, they confuse sometimes the dis the difference between success and significance. What Absolutely. can you tell us about that a little bit? Let's clarify that a little bit so we could see if, am I trying to be significant or am I trying to be successful? Absolutely. We, we, we search for success all the time, right? We search for being successful in business, successful in life, successful in a, in a kind of sport, etc. But... Um, as, as, as they always say, people can project success, but you cannot project significance. We all know that uh, they both look alike somehow, but significance cannot be fake. You can go all bold in a meeting, you know, with business cards and, uh, you know, having a firm handshake, uh, introducing yourself to everyone. But when it comes to, I mean, you're, you're projecting success somehow, either uh, uh, making it or even faking it. But when it comes to significance, we can feel significance. Yeah, we know it's, it's, it's tangible effects, and it lasts. It lasts on people. You know, servant leaders are more significant. Servant leaders don't look to be successful. They're, they, they look to be more significant. When it comes to uh, being significant, it's, it, it isn't about us. It's about the community you're serving. It's about how effective you are in whatever you're doing. Basically, no matter what we do to become significant, Significance is never about that one person only or one thing. It's about a person, an event, uh, an event in your life. I mean, come to think of it, the most significant people or events in your life, it evokes some kind of emotion, doesn't it? Obviously. See, that's, that's the difference. Yeah. You can look at any successful person and say, oh, well, they're successful. They're doing good in their business. They're doing good, but good for them. But when it comes to significance, it always touches the other person. And that's, that's the real difference that we've done. So if, can, I, can, I, can I seek success and significance at the same time? Of course. You can, I mean, uh, all significant people are successful, but not all successful people are significant. You see, we have a lot of examples throughout history and even today, people who are successful in their careers, but they're miserable in their lives. Or vice versa. They're doing millions of dollars, but they're not happy. Uh, their team is not happy with them. They're not growing with them. You see, okay, they might be successful in one area, but we're talking about the whole, you know, circle of life, the wheel of life when it comes to significance, about touching the other's lives more, about serving the others more. So we could say that we have a challenge where we have individuals thinking success is purely has to directly correlate with the income and the money you make. Because if we do uh, that, yeah. we're taking significance out of it. We're just only talking about money. Financial success, by all means, yes. Okay, if you consider somebody uh, who has a financial growth, who, who did something, a financial achievement to be successful, indeed, they might be successful in that area. But what about the other area? What about leadership? What about the people they're working with, what about the communities they're working with, what are they doing, what, what legacy are they leaving behind them for those people to grow. I mean, we both can give examples about people who touched our hearts during our career, who made a difference in our careers, who, who taught us something. And this is how being significant is. It's, it's more about the people around you, it's more about the communities about you, around you, more than just making money. I mean, you can make money anyways. I mean, Vahid, come to think of it. If you decide now, forget about all the ethics, all the principles, all the values, your mission in life, and you say, I just want to make money. There's a million ways, both legal and illegal. In making money, anyone can make money nowadays. Hey, I, I, I believe throughout history, anyone can make money. 
that what drives us, our, our passion for the thing that we love to do is what makes us do what we do. Uh, this, is, this is more about significance than about just success. And I also feel like when you get, I always think money without brain and IQ is very dangerous. And we could give a lot of examples in the history where it didn't do any good, right? So it can be just the only thing. But what I feel like is you could be successful, but if you don't have the fulfillment, go Absolutely. with the success. I think you take the money and you do things with it that might help you be temporarily happy, but it's not fulfillment. You could buy a new car and just get excited. You could buy a new house, get excited. Pair of new shoes, new Rolex, all of these different things. And, you know, it's so funny. I was going to, I told one of my friends, during this pandemic, I stopped wearing my watch because I kept washing my hands. So I just yeah. got rid of my Rolex is in my bag. I'm looking at it for 30 days and I'm like, why am I carrying this little thing on my hand? It doesn't make sense. Now when I, really I put it on, it feels weird. I'm like, I don't need it. I got my phone. I can see what time it is. But, so it was. It, it had nothing to do with success or significant or fulfillment. It was just something extra. So I'm like, okay, let's eliminate those. And that's what I think. If we don't get the fulfillment, we end up using alcohol, drugs. We're using this. We, we're not being friendly with our family members. We're becoming we that, exactly. These are the problems. Yeah, we call that instant gratification. We seek instant gratification instead of, you know, uh, instead of significance, instead of fulfillment. We seek this, this, uh, we go shopping for something that's really expensive just to seek this instant feeling of pleasure that, that we get it at the time, that we uh, uh, make an entourage for ourselves uh, uh, with, the, with a beautiful car, beautiful watch, etc. But at the end of the day, these are just temporary, uh, uh, instant uh, uh, pleasures that, that goes away, that fade away later on. What stays is really how did you serve others today? How did you serve your future today, your career today? What did you learn? This is the most important. What did you learn today to make a better tomorrow for yourself and for others? I mean, basically, that's, that's how I see significance and how I see success at the end of the day. You talk about 3H formula. Can you elaborate on that for us? Yeah. You know, when, 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 we're, uh, when we're hiring someone nowadays, uh, there's a big word in, in the HR field. It's called competencies. And we're seeking some kind of competencies. And these competencies aren't just skills. Uh, uh, they're, they're a form of knowledge, skills, and abilities. Okay, so when you come to think of it, uh, and, and hence my formula is, is about this, how can we build those competencies? How can we build someone and make them ready for the labor market or the, or the job itself? It's by touching their head, hand, and heart. So knowledge, skills, and attitude. Okay. When I'm, when I'm working on myself, when I'm developing myself, I'm not developing just my knowledge. Because if I de developed only the knowledge and I have a shitty attitude, uh, I'm not going to use this knowledge. If I'm going to have a bad attitude with, with, a, with a colleague, with a peer, and uh, you know, I'm not going to show him what I know, I'm going to let him figure it out. I'm going to let him lose time, lose effort, and lose money in the process. Uh, no matter how much knowledge you have, if you don't have this positive attitude, this willing attitude to, to use it, it's not going to be working. And this is what we focus on in training, not about the knowledge only, but about also the emotions that come with it, understanding our emotions. Uh, this is why we are, uh, all our trainings are based on, on emotional intelligence, to understand our, our own emotions and the emotions of others. And the third factor, which is the skills. Now, obviously, and now we see it more than ever, the, um, uh, the education system is not going to be the thing within the coming future. Uh, we saw some, some corporates, some big companies ditch educational degrees just before the, the COVID uh, uh, crisis. Uh, some of them were Facebook, uh, Google, uh, you name it. And now, uh, within the, the, the lockdown, 
we saw that, you know what, I can learn any skill that I want from the internet. There are millions of websites that, that can do self-education. So I'm, I'm really concerned about the knowledge factor versus the skills factor. What's coming next requires skills, technical skills, and also behavior skills. When it comes to behavioral skills, I need someone to think positively. I need someone to do problem solving all the time, not when he's, when, he, when he's in a good mood only. I need someone to make good decisions. He might be wrong, he might learn from mistakes, but he must see it as learning from his mistakes, not only just doing wrong or doing what he has to do on a nine to five job. So the whole game is changing nowadays. It requires more behavioral skills, more technical skills, obviously, and it's, it's updated every day. What you know today is obsolete in two years. And when it comes to knowing thyself, knowing oneself, knowing my emotions, knowing what makes me happy, what makes me sad, what makes me angry, and dealing with that anger, dealing with that sadness, putting, putting some plans, putting some action plans on how to deal with such emotions will make me hit big in my next job. But if somebody just, you know, got his education degree, graduated from university, applied for a job, and I've seen it in, in many job fairs. They come with the CV from a big uh, university. They throw you the CV, and this is my CV, contact me. Do you think we would contact such a person? No. And it's not his fault. This is what he has been taught. This is what his teachers told him in the university. You're paying thousands and thousands of dollars to get your degree from this university, you're going to find a managerial job as soon as you graduate. No, this is not the key anymore. What you require now. That's obsolete. Also, That's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowadays, you got, a kid but, but here's my question. Would you take somebody who's got more better attitude than skills and knowledge? Of course. Because knowledge can be taught, skills can be taught, but attitude, you cannot teach it. You can teach behavioral skills. You can teach them on how to know themselves, how to work on themselves. But as they say, you can take the horse to the river, but you cannot make the horse drink. Well, I put some salt in their oats and then... <laughs> okay, so, so, so here, here, here is my question. Yeah. If I have to work on the, the three areas, my, my yeah. knowledge, my skills, and my attitude, how would I do that if attitude cannot be taught. So that means a YouTube or a website cannot teach me attitude. So how do I go about learning and making my attitude much better? Not just being polite, saying, hi, how are you? You know, oh, fat, great, not, 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 not just, you know, saying hi, how, that, that's, that's like, you know, that's normal human conversation. I'm talking about attitude towards business, towards your peers, towards your employees, employers, or towards your clientele and customer service. So how do you learn that? It's, it's uh, through two factors. One of them is emotional intelligence, getting to know the basis of our emotions. Uh, we were not raised in a way that, uh, that we can express our emotions uh, adequately. We can express freely, but not adequately. Nobody taught us how to express. There, there's, I don't know, 80 forms of anger and sadness. We just say we're angry, we're sad. He made me angry, he made me sad. She did this to me, and I'm frustrated. This guy is getting on my nerves. What they're doing is their actions, and my reaction defines my attitude. So when I'm, when I'm teaching emotional intelligence, when I'm, sorry, when, I'm, when I'm learning emotional intelligence, I'm learning more about myself, about how I'm feeling, about how others are feeling, and about how to crack the code between us. Again, there comes some interpersonal skills whereby we speak to ourselves on daily basis. And I must know the way I'm speaking with myself. I must know what am I affirming to myself every day, positively and negatively. You know, there's inside us, in the brains, there's fear. And this fear comes out uh, naturally when you're faced with any danger, when you're faced with any, you know, uh, uh, in danger, something that's in danger to you. So fears comes in and, and gets you back to the comfort zone. Once you learn about that, you somehow crack the code. 
crack the code of your emotion, know exactly what would you do if you have this feeling of fear, while well, you can put an action plan. If this happened, I'm going to do that. If this happened, I'm going to do that. Take all the possibilities. Um, it's like we were all amazed by the season one of, uh, of Money Heist. We were all amazed during the series, during the episodes, that this professor, he thought about everything. He thought about every single thing that can go wrong. And he made a plan for it. But actually, you can take this and apply it to your real world. Sometimes I get people in, in my coaching session, you know, I'm afraid to do this project. I'm afraid to quit my job and, you know, uh, put, put all my efforts and, and time and money, all my resources on this project. What if it doesn't work? What if I couldn't do it? What if uh, things don't go as planned? And I tell them to do so, just to put a paper and pen, write down half the page, what ifs, and then the other half page, the length. Will, will you do this? Will you do this? What, if I, what if this happens? This is what I'm going to do. But if that happens, this is what I'm going to do. And at the end, a small question. I'm asking myself, what's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can happen? Just, just write down. Just write down. What would go wrong? I mean, would you die? No. Would you starve? No. No, no, you won't die. Happen? Your wife will kill you. You won't die. <laughs> your wife will kill you. <laughs> you know, uh, when, I, when I opened Standards uh, back in 2009, I, I was in a, in a big corporate. And I had a chauffeur, I had uh, two houses in two countries, and I had flight tickets and insurance and social security and all that. And when I, when I, said, uh, I, when I said to my, to my parents, to my wife, to my, you know, my family, I, I told them, you know what, I'm quitting and I'm opening standards. And they all went crazy. What? Are you crazy? You can't leave social security, insurance, schooling, allowances, I don't know what. And in Lebanon, you know, it's... it's it's always been difficult times in Lebanon. And then I gave them this question. I was like, okay, guys, what's the worst that can happen? It will not work. Okay, what will I do? You'll go find another job. I said, thank you. That's it. That's basically it. If it doesn't work, at least you would have tried. But at the end, you have your CV, you have your, your skills, you have your knowledge, you have your attitude. And once you have this, this willing attitude, you can do anything. And I mean anything, not by jumping off a cliff, by taking calculated risks, by putting things down on a pen and a paper and saying, okay, if this happens, I'm going to do that. If this happens, I'm going to do that. And then at the end, some self-affirmation. Just take a look at the past. Have you been faced with tough situations? Yes. Did you die? Did you starve? What happened to you? You learned. And from this knowledge, from these skills that you learn, you're ready now to start your career. You're not ready yet to exceed in it, but at least to start. You don't have to see the end of the tunnel really. You just have to, to, to see the few steps ahead so that you can figure out what's next. I agree with that 100%. Uh, I mean, calculated risk or just pure risk. I mean, if you yeah. don't take risk in your life. I mean, anything that we see that's innovative, that's out there, that's this Google, Facebook, Instagram, all of these things. When Mark, you know, Zuckerman paid a billion dollars for Instagram, people thought they were crazy. Now they're saying, oh, it was a good decision. All these different things, if you don't take risks, that, I mean, it is what it is. But listen, I know you got a book coming up, but we're running short on time. But I know that you're going to send us the, the copy of it, the PDF, whatever. Mm -hmm. And we want to, when the book is out, you let us know and we'll do a live session so you can talk about the book how it's going to be out. But definitely. You and I are going to do a little bit more. Thank you so much for taking this time and being with us. I appreciate it. Stay yeah. safe and take a lot of risk. Don't worry. If, if, if your wife ever wants to do anything to you, just have her call me. I convinced her that it was the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in September. And I hope you all guys read it. It's coming out in September. It's called Decisions Make Destiny. Awesome. Thank you so much. Let us know. Thank you, bye. Cheers. Talk to you bye -bye. soon. Bye-bye.